Hey guys, I'm Jeff and welcome back to my workshop. Today I am <laughs> here at my workshop computer where all the magic really happens. I'm designing something in CAD in Fusion 360. It is a manifold block, just a little outlet for my air system. I have the rapid air uh, air plumbing system running from my compressor to the different machines in my shop. It's pretty handy. I like it. Uh, and it comes with these aluminum blocks. That's where your outlets are, where you connect your tools, etc. And these are very simple little designs, and you can honestly go buy the little kit for them. comes with all the fittings for like $35, which is actually probably a pretty good deal. Uh, but I'm too obstinate for that, and I thought this would be a really good project to test out the new tool library I just got in Mach 3. I got all my tool length offsets set up, and I wanted to just kind of go through a pretty simple project and make sure that uh, it goes as smoothly as I hope it will. And the best part about CNC is I can just stand here on my computer and press buttons and then everything will magically happen for me. So I wanted to show you how great and magical that is. So stick around, let's just make this. Now, as I said, I've modeled up the block in CAD and this is a super simple design. It's just a block and the only features we're adding to it are a few holes. So this is really convenient for a number of reasons, mostly setup and tooling, stuff like that. Makes it a real quick, real simple operation. So we're going to take our CAD model and throw it into CAM real quick. Nice. Now to set up the stock, like I said, I'm using some one inch by two inch aluminum and I'm going to use just over three inches of that. The block itself measures at three inches and I'm going to give us an extra sixteenth or so for saw cut variation and just give us some room to clean that up. Now I'm aligning the part in the stock in this setup to be fully on one side because before we start running the cam routine, I'm going to machine the other side flat. So the side that we're going to have our work coordinate system set up on will have already been machined flat. That way it doesn't need to be accessible in the setup. Uh, I can have the other side sticking out the end of the vise and we can actually run the rest of the program, clean up that, and then go back and do all the other parts without having to reorient the workpiece, retouch off, all that kind of stuff. So after I tell Fusion that it's a machined side, yeah, there we go. Okay, now we will go ahead and have it moved over in the vise. There we go, nice. Okay, so now we can start working on our programming for what we're going to do here. A lot of simple operations. I've got this really long 5 16 end mill that I'm going to use to clean up that saw cut side. And even though that when I'm programming it right now, it seems like a really good idea, this is really kind of too spindly of an end mill for this long of a cut, this deep of a cut, and this much stick out. And I'm using 2D contour here to just take a full depth of cut pass, which while programming it, I think is a really good idea. But once we send it to the milling machine, I think I'm going to be proven wrong. So with this, I added way too many step overs and we got a really, really, really fine cut. And I think that's gonna cause chatter. In fact, let's just go ahead and test that out. Yikes, that was a lot of chatter. I didn't like that toolpath. We got there, I had a little bit of deflection, so the part is actually a little bit longer than I want it to be. But it's fine, it's not really critical, I just wanted a clean face. Uh, and that was a good education in what not to do. Okay, so next up we're gonna just do some spotting. We have six holes to spot, and I've got a 3 8 inch 90 degree spot drill. Now for the actual drilling, I've got a quarter inch drill bit. This is pretty much, uh, this is your, your big box, just random drill bit. But with a quarter inch drill bit, I'm gonna drill all the way through these four mounting holes. So this looks good, we got our four deep holes drilled, and I got that drill already in the machine, so what we're gonna do is just do the same thing again. What I'm gonna do is go down uh, just a little bit, uh, three quarters of an inch here for our two main holes. With the quarter inch bit, this will give us clearance for the next operation. Mm -hmm. 
And it's pretty much the same thing, we're just not going all the way through. Now to get these holes so big, I looked at my chart and it was like 37 64 so that's the clearance drill bit for a 3 8 NPT fitting. How am I going to fit that drill? Oh right, I have a CNC machine. We just, we're just going to do a 2D adaptive. We're just going to go in and just clear this out uh, CNC style. So anyway, this 2D adaptive is in two depths of cut, uh, which is 3 8 of an inch each depth. And I think I could definitely go deeper than that for sure. But this felt right. This felt like I'd get good chip evacuation and a good chip. Doing a 30 thou optimal load, which is again uh, on the conservative side, just being just being careful. We're running the ramp here for this 2D adaptive uh, a little bit more aggressive than I usually do because we've got that clearance hole in there, so it's not taking nearly as much off. Yeah, the cam looks good. Let's uh, click the go button and uh, send it to the machine. Nice. I can clean that up with a 2D contour on the inside if I was really worried about the surface finish or you know uh, circularity of these holes, but we're gonna run a tap through it, so I'm not too worried about it. And this is definitely not necessary, but I, I, I got that new tool. I got to try my, my big carbide face mill. Let's just go ahead and take a, take a facing pass uh, just to clean up the top. And this is pretty straightforward. I've set this up a few times already, just trying facing passes. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's face off the part, very end. Nice. Ah, I forgot to do the, I forgot to extend the pass outside of the part. So we got, yeah, yeah, a little trailing edge sweep there. That's going to bug me. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, we are adults and that means we chamfer in the machine. So I've got a carbide chamfer tool. Normally you could use a spot drill for this and I've done that a lot. And we will just go around and treat everything with a little chamfer and just send that to the machine. Nice. Okay, so that's not so bad. So we've got another setup to do, and this is on the end. And it's when I got to this point that I thought it would have been smarter overall to not worry about machining those two edge faces that uh, we spent so much time pre prepping the stock with. And I could have just flattened it in this setup. It might have been a little hairy to make sure that it was perfectly level and even, or we'd had to do some indicating, but this would have been smarter to actually uh, flatten this face in this setup and not try to do it with that long spindly 5 16 end mill. So always learning, always uh, trying to think of better ways to do something. So we will just add our setup. Get our stock all orientated and set it up in the mill. Nice. Okay. And then, just as before, we'll get us a little spot drill. There we go. And I'm just going to drill in the same depth I did for the face. I'm only going to go three quarters of an inch in. The reason for this is that I'm actually just going to finish these holes uh, offline off the machine in the drill press. Same with all the tapping. I don't, I'm not set up to do tapping in the milling machine yet. I need to get some tooling for that. But what's cool about these holes all being essentially identical is that I can actually just copy uh, everything I did in the other setup, I can just double that and then bring it into this setup and it'll, it'll need to kind of <laughs> adjust its bearings. I need to tell it, no, hey, we're not, you know, that, that it gets all screwy because it's in a different setup trying to make a hole it can't. So we're just going to tell it the right hole to do. Let's chamfer this one as well. That'll give us uh, almost every single corner chamfered. And so it'll look nice and we'll avoid any burrs. Mm. 
And there we go. Now let's just uh, flip it over and do the other side real quick. Nice. Well, I can take it out of the machine and I can go have the drill press do its job. It actually knows what it needs to do already. Isn't that right? After drilling and monkeying around with a hand tap, now all that's left is to fill it out with all the fittings and get it hung on the wall. Now here when I feel like getting the ladder out, I can run the hose to it. That'll be probably the easiest part of this entire job. I just, like I said, got to get up on a ladder to do that. So wish me luck and we will get that done here in a few days. But the block's done and it's ready to go. So that was a fun little CNC project, very basic, but I thought it'd be fun to just run through it with you guys. And yes, that's the joke. It's not just pressing a button every time to do it. There's a lot of setup and <laughs> getting, getting the machine ready to go. And the other thing about this project was that I set up my entire tool library in the milling machine. <coughs> And in my CNC milling machine, I use Mach 3 uh, as computer software that actually controls the machine. It sends the code, drives the steppers, uh, and sends out all the commands that I've got wired into the machine, like turning the spindle on, turning the coolant on, etc. And for those who may not be aware of it, you can pre-program different tool length offsets. So for the tool change system, my power draw bar, where I press a button and can change out different tool holders, uh, since those all have an equivalent reference plane, uh, being a spindle nose itself, I can measure the lengths of the different tools. That way, when I switch them out, the code knows their width, the machine needs to know their length, and once it does, uh, I can just switch them out without having to touch them off and zero every single different tool, every different operation. And uh, it went really well with this. I didn't have a single problem with any tool offsets at all. Now to just remember them and to get into the habit of always thinking uh, with, with a tool library in mind, not just uh, random tool sizes. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to check out my other videos on working in the home workshop, both manual and CNC, as well as all sorts of other things, 3D printing, uh, lasers, painting, farting around with stuff. You can also check me out on Instagram. I've got a couple accounts over there. And a special shout out to all of my patrons on Patreon. That Motley crew are people who directly contribute to me doing what I can in this shop and on this channel. And if you want to join that revered crowd, you can head on over to Patreon and support me at any level. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.